Budgie, if I were Britannia, I'd waive the rules. And, you know, I gave up trying to understand most of Budgie's titles for songs and albums. <laughs> I never way got back. that one, that's for sure. Way back. Uh, I'm sure there's something to it that I'm not aware of. I'm sure maybe some of my UK friends could enlighten me. But uh, this was album number... Six? Oh, hell, I can't even remember. And, and I'm, not near, I'm not as familiar with this as I thought I was. I thought this was one of the earlier ones, but... No, it's not that early. I mean, they were around in the early 70s, but... Yeah, just straightforward, hard rock. Uh, I would call this the first wave of British heavy metal as much as I would call mm -hmm. anything else from that era. Um, very good stuff. Yeah. I mean, Metallica kind of gave them a name in the U.S. And, and I Honestly, I discovered them because of Metallica. There's several bands I, I have to give Metallica props for introducing me to. What song was it that they did that was... Uh, Crash Course and Brain Crash Surgery Brain and Brain. Brain. Yeah. Red Fan. Red Fan later on, yeah. Yep. So, it's just solid rock, uh, and it's, of course, and it's a little proggy. It reminds me of Rush in places. Yep. Um, uh, the singer is uh, I can't remember his name. No, it's because we're on a film. You turn the you turn the camera on, and you forget Burke. everything. Burke. Yep. Burke Shelley. Shelley Burke. Shelley Burke. And uh, yeah, he he it. reminds me of Geddy Lee in places, big time. It's it, it's a power trio too. Yeah. And uh, I always thought they had a really cool. Um, oh, that's nice. No, we got nothing. <laughs> just a plain old oh, A&M. Just... This must be an American one. Yeah, it's definitely an American pressing of it. Yeah, there's no credits on here at all. Nothing. Oh, well. Regardless. It's good so, stuff, and they don't it, get their due. They don't, definitely don't. It's funny, because you see people mention the first wave of British heavy metal, and, you know, it's always Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, and it's like... Yeah, but there was also Judas Priest and UFO and Budgie. And yep. There were tons. So. Yep, not to mention all the bands outside, like Scorpions and yep. Thin Lizzy and... And even Motorhead is in there because I don't consider Motorhead a new wave of British heavy metal band. I think they're like the missing link between the two, you know? Yeah, because uh, their first album was, what, 78? Even earlier than that. I think 75 was on the level. Or 76. Cause no, 75. Wait a minute. No, that can't be true because 76 is still Hawkwind. It must have been 77. Yeah. Because On Parole came out before the self-title, and it was uh, like a year earlier. And Ace of Space came out, what, 1980? Something like that. Yeah. There you go. Um, am I next? I guess I am. You're next. The greatest album in the world. Greatest album in the world. <laughs> Boston. There is I mean, no better album than this. Let's just take aside the millions of, maybe not millions, but hundreds and hundreds of times that we've heard these songs. And let's strip that hundreds. away. Strip it away and just think... It's really a good fucking album. It is. It's some song, the songwriting and the production. Who, who sounded like that in 1976? There was nobody. More than a feeling? Man, what a mega song. No, and it was a massive undertaking by guitarist John, uh, Tom Schultz. Uh, Although, the other guitar player in the band, um, Barry uh, Goudreau, Goudreau, was also one of the main songwriters on this and doesn't get anywhere near the credit no. because... They, they, he just doesn't. I mean, but he I, actually released an, a solo album after he was let go from Boston that sounds like Boston. Huh. Um, I mean, Tom Scholz had his own studio. I mean, who yeah. who goes into the whole thing with that? Plus, you gotta love his hair. <laughs> Sib Hashan. He died a little while ago. I always loved him. He had yeah. the best white afro ever. Yeah. And of course, Brad Delp. Yeah. Uh, vocals that you get. Oh my gosh! God, I could sing high. Yeah. He he's been gone for quite a and while. And just when you just when you think you can't get any higher, he gets another. He gives another. Yeah. And I another. Level. I was in a band in college, and we used to do more than a feeling. Forget it. There's no way. That's so high. <laughs> I was gonna back off the mic and try to get lost in the midst of the mix because I ain't hitting that note. Yep. <laughs> That's a good record. That's all there is to it. It I, is. I right. think a lot of people like ourselves when you're really into music and you just heard it so many times, you just. Yeah. Dude. You're never not going to own it, but uh, you may never put it on your turntable again. <laughs> right. But you can't not have it. Yeah. You just can't. And the cover? Come Classic. on. Yeah. What a cool cover. <laughs> that one and the follow-up. <laughs> yeah, totally. There was, I mean, Petra tried to remake this with their own guitar spaceship ships, but yep. 
it, it was not quite like this. And this is like, you know, Earth is exploding and they're going out to try and find another place. I mean, this is 76, man. What a huge friggin' album this was. And Massive. And there was no synthesizers used. I'm pretty sure it's no. in there somewhere. No, there wasn't. I, I remember that was like a big deal for some reason. Yeah, because Queen created, was the same way. Because created, they created all that sound with just guitars. Yep. and. You know. Yep. All right. We got another classic one. Uh, this was his second solo Alice Cooper only without the original group. Alice Cooper Goes to Hell, uh, follow-up to Welcome to My Nightmare in 75, and title track is awesome. I mean, this is just classic Alice. It's really just carrying on in the same vein that Nightmare did. Um, there's a little, there's a lot of bit rock, there's a little bit vaudeville in there, uh, even a little bit of Broadway kind of yeah, kind of yeah. thing. I mean, he was definitely, he was a showman, and it shows, uh, out, like I said, title track, Awesome. I'm the coolest. It was just kind of smarmy, loungy kind of Almost song. Almost like a like David Lee Roth could have done that song. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I never cry was a big one of his first. That was a ballads. huge hit. Yeah. Uh, Guilty, another great tune. Always chasing rainbows and going home. Very autobiographical. A lot of stuff that he did. Um, great album. Yep. There he is, just descending into hell. You can see. Bye, Alice. Glad, hope you enjoy your time in hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more, and then uh, what's right there? Oh, this is it. And then we'll go oh. to our top ten. All right. Well, this this is yeah. This probably could have been top ten too. Hawkwind, album number five, six, five or six. Yeah, last one. Last for one for Lemmy. Lemmy. Um, very much based on Michael Moorcock's Elric character. Uh, there's a lot of that going on here in the songs themselves and the artwork. Um, awesome, proggy, space rock. Hawkwind's pretty unique. Yeah, they are unique. Uh, huge following. I always call them the, the British Grateful Dead, not because they sound like the Grateful Dead, but... Because they, they have that kind of, kind of odd following. Yeah, people total hippies. Uh, following them from show to show, kind yeah. of like in a caravan. and Yeah. Yep. This, total hippies. This seems like it has some goodies in it. It's a gatefold. I know it's a gatefold. It's a gatefold, but I think there's something else in here. Oh, uh, oh, it, oh! It's one of these guys. Kind of folds out into something, into a big shield. I forgot about that. <laughs> and it's got a pretty hefty uh, insert. Pretty cool. This one's not going to tear anytime soon. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's, they had a couple albums like this that had really just massive. Uh, it seems like something should be in here. I wonder if I'm missing something. I think this was over there. Well, no, this was the. Oh. This was actually the sleeve. It they, seems like there should be a booklet. I don't know, maybe I'm missing it. Who knows? Alright, so we're going to get into our top 10. So, um, did we already do the ones we have in common? Nope, we're going to do. Uh, we haven't done any of them yet, so we're going to do the top 10 now. So, I think you've got them all over there. I do. Because well, all I have is my 7 through 10. I'm going to cut it real quick and then we'll. Okay. And we'll do it.